I'm going to talk about how you can use Service Point, which is a product that we have built, um, and use PowerTool with it to, to automate self services for end users. It's actually uh, leveraging your PowerTool skills to your end users in your company. And show you how you can add, um, how you actually can build up a, a entire workflow of your PowerTool functions um, using Service Point. Uh, my name is Niklas Gode. I live here in Stockholm. Um, I'm a PowerTool MEP, and I work at a company called InfoZipper. We have an extension team, and we sit and build PowerTool stuff all day, which is awesome. It's it's really, great hot dogs. Yeah, yeah. great hot dogs. <laughs> I'm unemployed. Yeah. <laughs> so it's great company, lots of fun work, and lots of PowerTool. So I just, ah, I love it. Anyway, um, I'll just do a short, short demo of um, the actual portal, what it looks like. Um, it's based on uh, HTML5 and CSS. It's uh, responsive, so if you're on a mo mobile phone, you'll get a mo mobile view. And here's the um, desktop experience. Um, to the left, we have categories where you can place uh, your different types of services that you have. Do you, you guys want me to zoom some? Is it small or is it okay? No, it's okay. Well, I'm in front of us. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't ask you. <laughs> and um, you can categorize your, your, all your services that you have uh, within your categories. So in this one, the Azure one, we have lots of fun um, Azure stuff. But before we go into that, I'll start to demonstrate how simple it is to actually build an uh, end user service. So let me just I'll close that one and open this one. There we go. Hit F S T A. This is the admin part of um, the web. Um, to get access to this one, we, uh, we set up roles in Service Point based on um, what's it called claim rules from ADFS. So if you're in a specific group, you can access the admin part. If you're not in that group, you will not be able to access it. <clears throat> and this is how we control um, the access in the portal. Um, categories are simple to build. I'll just click on categories and click on add category and I'll create a new one called PowerShell Summit. There we go. PowerShell Summit. And I'll just go ahead and save it. There we go. I'll just move it at the top. Wait, shouldn't you talk about PowerShell? This is gooey stuff. You. Ah, we're getting there. Uh, yes. <laughs> okay, so now I have a new category called PowerShell. Now let's start populating this one. So I'm going to go in to, back to the admin part, click on services, and click on add service. And we have a couple of templates that you can use with, with uh, ready to use um, process uh, thingies that you can just pick one and, and reuse it on a lot of different services. But now I'm going to build a new one. So I'm going to select new blank process. There we go. Demo, demo. I'm going to call that one. PowerShell <coughs> Summits. The name, the short description, a demo. And a longer description if I want to. A longer um, description. And down here, I can <coughs> also add an image if I want to. And Let's see if I prepared this one. I think I did. Oh, I know I did, but there we go. And this gives me an image on my, my service that I'm creating. I'll click on Next. Here we can add a cost. Um, all managers love cost. They want to know how much things cost. So yeah, we have cost. This one costs 120 uh, Swedish kroners, which would be maybe $12, $10, something. And we'll add a monthly cost of, of 12 Swedish kroners. Um, I'm going to add it to the category, uh, category that I just created. And I can also add keywords if I want to, like hashtags, uh, which makes it more searchable. And I can add a owner of the service if I want to. And I can also restrict it to um, so that it's only visible if you're in a specific role. Some services are not for HR. They might be, yes? Those rules can be coupled uh, against claims again. Yes, yes. Cool. 
and you, know, you can add any claims you want, and then you can configure it however you want. Uh, okay, next I'll click on create, and this should give me a blank service. So if we head back here and click on updates, you'll see I have a PowerShell Summit service. And click on that one, and it's real empty. Okay, so now to the hard part. How should I design my service? Um, I'll go into PowerShell and see what do I want to do. So for my demo number one, um, we have a, a user case here, which is called, as I help this user, I want to select a user and add him or her to a group. Um, it should be possible to select a user. It should be possible to select a group. It should also be possible to see the description and mobile phone of the user I just selected. And, you know, if you could add it, please uh, tell me if, some, if he's already a member of that group. Okay? Um, <clears throat> in PowerShell, we have the AD commands. Awesome. So if I wanted to select a user in PowerShell, I would type something to search for a username. I would type um, get AD user and use filter, same account name like, search, whatever. And th this would give me all users that start with Niklas. And in my environment, I hope that's only me. Um, I'm also gonna add the description and mobile properties to this command. Okay, I'll run that one. And if I type, let me, oh yeah. I was in a back later, so I'm gonna do it like this. If I type dollar user, I have my object here. We have a distinguished name, name, given name, mobile phone, name, and so on. Um, the next thing I want to do is find a group. And in this case, I have a group called PS Summit. So I'll go ahead and search for it and, uh, with the get ad group command and use filter name like search star. Okay, I'll go ahead and run those two commands. And there we go. This should give me dollar group. <clears throat> okay. And if I want to add this user to the group, let me just see. <laughs> I hope he's not in this group already. Uh, really doesn't matter because we're, we're gonna work with that too. Okay. I'll remove myself. There we go. And adding someone to group, I know it's so simple with PowerShell. Add AD group member, uh, identity, the group's ID, and members. The, the users that you want to add. There we go. And this should add the user to the group. And uh, if I click on the group again, uh, you'll see that I have a member. So now I'm a member of this group. Okay? Pretty simple so far. And yeah, that's all it is. If I run this command again, it'll fail. It'll tell me that the specific account is already a member of, of the group. Okay, good. Now, what I want to do now is deliver the same experience to the end users using my PowerShell commands, these commands that I just wrote here. Um, <clears throat> and in service point, um, let me just show you how it looks. I've added a couple of PowerShell modules to this folder, demo data sources, um, drop down PowerShell summit user uh, group, and summit user user or whatever. I'm gonna talk about that one later. And I have this one as well, a web service. So, simply by copy pasting my code and placing it in the, in the dropdown.powershellsummituser.psm1 file, a module file, um, I can add the functionality to service point. So, this allows me to use my PowerShell functions from service points. Okay, so remember, remember this name, drop down partial summit user. If I go back to service point now and to my service designer and click on form editor, I can add, I, have, I actually have a couple of elements I can add. Simple text fields, text areas, te text blocks, uh, drop down lists. This one is inter interesting now. I'll take that one, just click on it, add it here and type select a user. Save that one. And if I update mm -hmm. the service point page, you'll see my select a user uh, drop down here. Okay? Next, what I want to do is connect this one to the PowerShell um, module that I just created. To do that, 
I simply click on edit, go down to something called dynamic bind. We bind it to a PowerShell um, data source. And I type summit. There we go. Yay. That's all modules on the machine or Yes, on yes. The yes, you can actually point out which modules should be inventoried. So you can have a uh, thousand modules or one module or how many you want. And you can have them on different machines if you want to as well. But I just set up a standard module on the server and I'm ready to go. Yes. Nice. Yes. Um, the only ones that are not standard are these ones. If you, if you look at them, they are kind of funky. They have search, validate, get categories, and get default. These are the only ones that are funky, and these are the ones connected to the dropdowns. Because when, when doing dropdowns, we have to have some sort of rules for service point to understand what's happening. Now, we differ when we use web services and activities. In those, you can use any PowerShell function that you have. But the dropdowns are specific. So what this command does, it takes whatever you search for, runs it through get ad user filter stem account name, like what you're searching for, search, and then it returns an ID and a name. So if I go back to my service again, click on that one, you'll see that I can search um, Active Directory for users. If I just click on it, I'm going to find everything, which is uh -uh, not good. So what I want to do is make it searchable. And now I can actually type things, or the end user can type things, and get the result back. So there we go. And this would give me the same result as in PowerShell, except the end user is using my stuff, my PowerShell commands. <coughs> OK, so that was the first criteria. The second one was that I wanted to show some information about this user. Um, showing information about users, I mean, it's simple if you know PowerShell. I could simply type get dash ad user um, identity, sound account name, property star, and get pretty much any information I want. Lots and lots of stuff. Um, to do it in um, service points, I can use the same command that I just typed and place it in a function, which I can call pretty much any, anything I want. Or, yeah, you should probably follow the, the verb noun standards and use some type of, of prefix on, on, your, on your noun. Um, but what I'm doing here is I'm adding a mandatory parameter called uh, identity. And I have the command get ad user identity, identity, properties, description, mobile. And pick out Sam account name, description, mobile. Okay? Pretty simple, powerful stuff. But the cool thing here. So I can take this one and add it. See now, get dash ps summit user add, and this gives me um, same command in the GUI. And I also uh, I can also see if something is mandatory, required, or if it's not. So it tells me very quickly what I have to, uh, what I can, how I use this command. Okay. Now for the tricky part. So the thing is about this page is it's a front-end page. This is on the end user side of everything. And we don't actually have PowerShell in, in uh, Chrome or, or Firefox or whatever you're using. So we have to use some kind of script, which would be JavaScript. I think that would be um, the simplest thing to use. So what I want to do now is select the user. And depending on which user you select, I want to display even more information about this user. Okay, so the criteria that I had in my demo code were show mobile phone and description. Okay, cool. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do now is add two text fields. Call this one mobile phone, if I can spell. There we go, and this one will be description. Description. <laughs> Description. I should also talk a little bit more slowly. OK. Now, important thing here is the actual name of it. This is the display name. The name is the internal name. So I want to match those with the actual um, properties of the object that the PowerShell command returns. So I'm going to type mobile. And then I'll go for description up here. Uh, there we go. 
Okay, sweet. And the last thing I have to do now is add some type of JavaScript to my select thing. So if I click on edit, edit JavaScript, I have something called on change, which triggers every time you change this, um, the drop down. Every, every time you type something, it's gonna call on the on change part. Um, so yeah, I'm a powerful guy. I do not know much about uh, JavaScript, so I'm gonna steal this one. There we go, copy that one, paste it in here. Ooh, small. We'll look at this instead. So what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm storing um, the current value in identity. Then I'm calling the get ps summit user uh, PowerShell function, and I'm binding the parameter identity to identity. And in my function, I, I tell uh, service point to add to description, you should add um, object.description. To mobile, you should add the, um, object.mobile. So I mean, just by knowing a little powerful, you can figure this part out. It's real simple. Let me just save that one. Look here. Reload and type, there we go. Select and there we go. Nice. Yeah, and this is so cool because now I'm just doing 80 stuff. I can do, do this with anything. Anything PowerShell can do, I can use here. And that's what's so, yay, awesome. Okay, um, I also had a criteria that I wanted to select a group. So let me add one more drop down here. I call that select a group. <coughs> select a uh, group. And in the same way, I'm gonna bind this to a PowerShell function. And I'm gonna search for summit. And I'm gonna pick by PowerShell summit group function. And save that one. The group function works in, in pretty much the same way as the, the user one did. Uh, get 80 group, filter on name like uh, whatever you're typing, and return ID and name. We do require that you return ID and name. Name is uh, what the end user sees, and ID is the actual um, thing that we can search on or do something with. Uh, object with is something we use a lot. Okay, cool. So, say that one, and now I have a additional thing where I can search for a group. So now I'm gonna type my name, there we go. Yep, and then I'm going to, yeah, I have to add the uh, searchable as well, so I can type something. I do have a lot of groups in here. There we go, make it searchable. Okay. No. Oh, it's still loading. Didn't like me this time. Okay, good. So, there, search for myself. Ooh, someone is using all my internet. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll search for the group PS Summit. And there we go. Okay, nice. Um, okay, if we look at the could thing that I had in my criteria, uh, criteria um, could be possible to see if user is already a member of the group. And lazy as I am, I did not want to write that myself. So I stole uh, Simon Wollin's uh, module. He did a demo on Active Directory um, earlier today. So I downloaded that one last night when he published it. Uh, let me just import it here. <coughs> import module. C demo uh, data sources and his, uh, come on now. Internet connection, no. data sources, and uh, SWAD. I, I was actually trying to figure out why he called it SWAD last night, but then today I realized that it, that's his name. Simon <laughs> Wolin. <laughs> okay, get module. Um, uh, 
name. Sweat. Okay. Oh, I want. Oh, sorry. Git command, of course. Uh, dash module um, sweat. Okay. So <coughs> now I've loaded all his functions in here. Uh, I placed it in a, a known directory for service points. And, well, guess what? I can go to data sources, type swad, and I can actually steal all his commands. That's pretty nice. Okay, so the one I want to add, yeah, let's see now, Simon's code, <coughs> add module, swad group member report. Let's take a look at that one. So this is the command I want to use. Um, I want a group report from the PS Summit group, which updates this, and I want to use it in um, service points. So I'm just going to go and grab that one. Group membership report, add, and save. Okay, there we go. Um, now the thing about this one is that it outputs text, not objects which, um, of course, I, I can, can present in, in service points or anywhere, but it's, I would rather have objects. It's a little more nice to work with. But never mind, we'll take this data and present it. I think if you uh, erase out the report, you can get the objects out. So swear group member. Oh, you can? I think so, yeah. Yeah, but then I have to, then I have to write the yeah, JavaScript. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, I'll take my JavaScript, get a text block this time, add it to the select group part, and add a on change JavaScript. Copy that one in, and da 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 this and set set it to the swad report attributes. And what I have to do now is change this one to SWAD reports. <clears throat> Here we go. And I'll type my name. And I'll type the group, PS Summit. And that one popula populates, uh, presents the data from uh, Simon's command in, in service points. <laughs> Yay. Okay. I actually want to do something as well. So <coughs> let me just remove myself from this group and connect all the dots. There we go. Move on that one. Um, back in PowerShell, actually, I have the last part, which is the, the code that is actually executed in the back end, um, the stuff that, that happens. Um, I have that in an additional module. Uh, which is not placed in, in, in the same um, folder as this one. Uh, we, we think about it as front-end code and back-end code. And we don't want any, any set commands or, or uh, remove commands in, in the front-end part. Because that no good. So we keep that in the back-end. And in this case, I want to add AD group member, some group and some user. And the input should be user and group. Okay? Pretty simple still. Um, back in service points, I'll jump from the form editor to the workflow editor, and here's where all the magic happens. I have all my activities here. Um, for this example, I have my activity.powershell summit. Click up that one, click in my activity, click on settings, and here I can bind um, anything from here to here which in this case would be the selected user and the selected groups. Um, what I have to do is create a variable called user and one called group. So I'm going to do that quick here. User and group. There we go. And in my workflow editor, I can select user and group. Here we have user at the bottom and group at the top. There we go. And yes, I have to connect them here as well. And this should give me the whole flow. We have that one to user, and <coughs> this one to group. There 
there we go. And as always, everyone has managers who, who have to control everything. So what I'm gonna do now is add a um, approval. So someone has to approve this. And in this case, I'm gonna select the user's manager. We'll take uh, user manager, there we go. Otherwise, anyone can go in and order this. And with, managers want to have control, and this gives them control. Save that one back here. <clears throat> Click on refresh, and let's test it. Yep, select myself. I'll select the PS Summit group. Come on, select domain admin. Oh, in my command, yes, you can. <laughs> and yes, that is something um, that you have to think about when you design this. Um, add it to the cart. We have a shopping cart if you want it. If you don't want it, you can turn it off. That was one of the things that was really <coughs> important for all our end users in the beginning, but it turned out that no one was using it. Uh, okay, close. So, okay, so now I order this. Um, it gets placed up here in my orders, so as an end user, I can follow it. Um, the first thing that happens is a, an approval, and it goes to my manager. And IT guys, this is a good thing about being an IT guy, but I can be my own manager. <laughs> yes. At least in my lab environment. Um, and the manager gets the choice to either approve or reject um, the order that I just placed. Um, you can assign the for forms that the manager sees in the same way that I did with the order form. Let me just go ahead and approve that one. Okay. Order cake. Order cake, yes. <laughs> or and coffee. The, on that task, it, it didn't show the name of the group that... Oh, yeah, yeah no, no, no. Yeah, you see you go into details? Yeah, yeah, you okay. click on details, and if I haven't counted anything, you're, you're going to see the same form uh, that I typed yep. in, and you'll see okay. the same information, right. but it's grayed out. You could say, name, yeah. add me to guests, and then the details, <laughs> add me to domain admins. <laughs> yep, <laughs> yeah. And actually, that's, that's one thing, um, one thing you can do is press, press F12 at any time here as an end user. Mm -hmm. And you can look up this row, the PS Summit group row, and type domain admins. Mm -hmm. What we do is we sign all data that we send up and down. So if you tamper with any data bound to a drop down here, uh, it won't execute. Nice. Yeah, so we have certificates that validate it. I don't know why I didn't build it. <laughs> but we thought about that. Yep. Uh, and mm -hmm. the end result should be, if I did this correct, that we have a user in the PS Summit group. Yeah. So now I'm back. Cool. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the more simpler services. Um, what is cool right now is uh, uh, Azure. Everyone heard about that? Oh, yeah. yeah, lots and lots of talk about that. Um, so we've been looking a lot at the, the Azure Resource Manager and specifically creating new virtual machines. Uh, we started with doing this in the old, old portal, which was kind of ah, bleh, um, but then the, the resource manager came and it simplified our life. Oh, it's totally awesome now. So in this case, new virtual machine. Um, this is a service we are building now where we populate stuff. We, um, you type in a resource group uh, name. It gets validated against Azure uh, to see if it, it exists or not. You can type a, a server name. You can add a configuration, a size to it. You can set a, a administrative password. Um, and username. You can type administrator or administrator who block those. Um, you can add an owner to the actual resource group and you can add contributors and uh, readers based on roles in, in Azure. Um, if I wanted to do this using PowerShell, let's look at that first. PowerShell is fun. Um, I would type this command first. First, switch um, Azure mode to Azure Resource Manager, <coughs> and uh, yeah, it's going to be removed soon, so we have to update all the code. No problem. Um, next thing, I want to create a resource group, and this command would create an empty resource group. But if I point it to a uh, template file or a gal gallery file, I can create pretty much totally awesome stuff. So let me just point one out here. 
that I have in templates over here. There we go. This one. And this file. There we go. It contains additional parameters called uh, resource group, admin user, admin password, Windows OS version, VM size, VM location, VM name, <coughs> and so on. Um, I didn't have these before, but as soon as I pointed out this JSON file, I can see uh, these additional parameters that are available here. What's even cooler is that I, I can design my own um, JSON tem uh, templates using Visual Studio. So let's take a quick look at that one. There we go. Projects. I'll select the um, Azure Resource Group project. Call it something. Demo, demo, maybe. <laughs> Lots of demos. And I can select a template. Um, in the earlier versions, we only had web template and web app as, uh, as SQL and that stuff. But now we have virtual machines, Windows virtual machine. Windows server virtual machines with load balancer and Ubuntu server. But since I love Microsoft and run everything on Microsoft platforms, <laughs> I'm gonna select a Windows, Windows server. And what this gives me is an actual uh, template file called Windows Virtual Machine dot, uh, JSON. Uh, it's the same kind of file that I pointed out earlier uh, to the new Azure Resource Group command. Um, it is a, a JSON file, and you can add pretty much anything you want in here based on, on rules from Microsoft. Uh, you can build up uh, locations if you want. Um, can you maybe zoom up? Oh, yes, of course. Um, how do you see my <laughs> <laughs> just control plus. Uh, control plus. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> ma maybe command so plus. And yeah, you have no control. Down, down on the left, you have oh, oh, there we go. Okay, now, nice. Oh, no, now we're talking. Oh, that's not good. And with the, with the Mac, you should be able to hold control and... Like, yeah, control. Yeah, and control and... Oh, no. Yeah, close the magnifier. That's, that's not what you want. Oh, okay. You have that 100% down at the bottom left. Or not way bottom left. The left. Oh, that, that's right. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay, sweet. Sweet. Learn something new every day. There you go. Yay, now we're talking. <coughs> okay, let me just move that one there. So, um, here we have the, the, the parameters that the new um, Azure Resource Group picks up. New storage account name, admin username, admin password, or, or any custom stuff that you put in here. Um, the build up for what we're actually using is down here. We have nickname should be my VM Nick, uh, image offer, Windows Server, blah, blah, blah. And down here we have the actual resources that are, are going to be installed. Now, if I wanted to add something to uh, my, my JSON file, I could click on resources, click on virtual machines. Um, this marks the, this actual vir uh, virtual machine. But by right-clicking up here, I can click Add New Resource, and I can add um, additional virtual machine if I wanted to, or other cool stuff if I wanted to. And I can tell it to use the same storage account. Um, I can tell it to use Niklas Demo Machine, and I can cl click on Add. And um, the template gets built for me, so I don't have to care about typing it correctly. I just get it there. Ah. Do you, do oh, you, I did a uh, Nick. Visual Studio code was a pain. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, if I click on a virtual machine, we're going to love this one, I can go down to a, let's see, where is it? Uh, bah, 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 bah. PowerShell Desire configuration, uh, configuration Extension. So I can actually add um, a DC stuff in here as well, which, which, <laughs> Start when when I when I provision my servers. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let me just add that one. <laughs> so I mean, this is pretty cool stuff, and it's real simple to to build up an entire uh, environment here. And the only thing I have to do is point out my my, my JSON blob and uh, add the parameters required by it, and, and pull it off, and it creates uh, everything I need in in, in um, uh, Azure Resource Manager. Because it's, it's a lot of stuff, and it's kind of hard to, to know all of that stuff, especially for me. 
Anyway, what we did was build a server, uh, a service in, in service point around us, which uses that single command, new Azure resource uh, group. Uh, we also added um, the uh, add um, role assignments to, to add an owner, a, a contributor, and a reader. Um, resource group tests, maybe. There we go. So um, we validate the name against uh, Azure to see that it doesn't exist. We select a location, North Europe or, or West Europe or whatever. Uh, and here we point out the actual configuration JSON documents that you want to use. In this example, I only have one, but we could build how many we want. Um, add a size, um, A0, A1, D1. I'm going to do a A1 since I'm paying for this account. Um, we also have the join domain thing, which adds a DC uh, configuration to it and performs an offline join against your domain. Um, I'm not going to show that now because it's like really slow and we don't have time for it. Um, down here we can add a contributor, <coughs> use a colleague of mine. Yes? Does that mean that if you check that box you get context, uh, contextual menus added? Um, yes, you get the um, uh, organizational units, um, that's the one we took. And you also get a validation on the server uh, server <coughs> name, since we already have one SRV01 uh, in our well, I was software. I looking for the contextual stuff, so yeah. this, this will make a good sell, I think, for some of my customers. Yes, <laughs> yes. And, and this is just a simple toggle line. You can toggle show, hide, or whatever you want. Awesome. Okay, so in this case, I, I would have to change the server names to something else. Just remove that one. How then. would this work with oh. multiple subscriptions? Would that be a parameter to your deployment workflow? Uh, yes, that would be an input to, uh, we have a config file in the back, where you point out time. Uh, you, get, you get 10 minutes. Okay, I got 10 minutes, good. Uh, where you point out your, your, which, um, which account you want to use. Okay. So yes, you, you can use different accounts. Uh, one more user. Okay, there we go. Lop, and place order. In this case, I have removed the, the um, um, var, as we say in Swedish. Okay, so now I place order. And this one, since it costs money, my money, uh, <laughs> I, I have a <laughs> approval on it. So I'm going to go in and approve this one. There we go. And here we can see what the person has ordered. We can see who requested it, what he's trying to order. Um, Add owner, okay, 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 looks good, looks good. I'll just type okay. And, <clears throat> and now we're creating stuff up in, in uh, Azure. So this might take some time. So while it's being created, let's take a look at a different approach on this. Um, many customers ask, how, uh, is it possible to manage your Azure stuff? Yes, it is. Um, we don't want to give our end users access to Azure. Yes, we know. Okay, cool. Let's solve that. So in this example, I'm going to create a new Azure resource group called Blah Blah. There we go, in North Europe. And I'm going to assign myself, let me create two of these, Blah Blah 2. And I'll assign myself as the owner of Blah Blah not blah blah too. There we go. Okay, so now I am the owner of blah blah, but not blah blah too. In service point, we have a, a um, service called manage uh, Azure resource groups, where I can manage my Azure resource groups. And if I click on a, uh, the drop down here, uh, I will see blah blah and some uh, summit demo thing I made yesterday just to make sure everything works. <laughs> but I do not see blah blah too. Um, we control this simply by looking um, on the resource groups in in, uh, in Azure, and we look at the um, resource groups. We look at blah blah. There we go, and we look at um, 
the role assignments. And in this case, I am set as owner. I think that's cool, that's me. So I can see this one, I can manage it, and I can add users to it. So uh, in what context is the PowerShell code executed? Uh, we have a service account that run, runs the code. So the service account is actually the, 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 one the, the, ser the service account is using an Azure account, which is doing the stuff. And you, I mean, you, you can use um, remote endpoints, um, build it however you want in the background to make it super secure. You should talk to that guy about that. But um, the basic design is service accounts and then bring it out however you want, however secure or unsecure you want it. So is it like the Apple or we have multiple identity support? Uh, we have, um, in, in a, the current installation, we have two identities you can have, one for the front, the front end part and one for the back end part. So the front end part should never ever write anything because that's the dangerous part. The back end uh, is more controlled and it's controlled by the process that we build up. So, so that's where we do the automations, not mm -hmm. in the front end part. But you could be triggering automation workflows and not sure. Yes, yeah. yes, you can. So uh, you SMO, uh, keep the security in there. Yeah, yeah. And, and just leave it to, to uh, the automation there. Yeah. If you run Orchestrator, you can let Orchestrator do the job and just pick up the data. Yeah. Um, okay. <clears throat> okay. I, um, Time is almost running out. Let me just show one more thing. So we built this really totally awesome service called, um, what do you call it? Ah, uh, yeah, the PowerShell demo thing. What I can do now is I can use pretty much any PowerShell stuff that I have in, in, in service points to build an even, even bigger workflow. So if I wanted to create a ticket in, in the service manager, I could add a new service request here. Bring that one down and type a title, there we go, demo, and a description, <clears throat> blah, and that was pretty much the uh, mandatory stuff that I have to use, so I'm just going to use those two. Um, maybe I want to uh, do something in Office 365. I can pick, yeah, create a user as well, based on whatever you select. So. The, the workflow editor becomes real, real simple to work with, and your PowerShell functions get visualized for the service designers, and your end users can actually um, use your code that you sit, sit and write. Um, okay, I think my time is up. Yes, yeah, quest, question. Question. Yes. Um, so does that mean you actually have done some tooling around just reading the commandlets and visualizing the parameter sets and validation and all that into your GUI? Or yes, we have custom code that inventories, uh, we call it the inventory system, that reads through um, whatever folder you point out where your PowerShell stuff is. It um, inventories if the parameters are mandatory, if they're boolean, strings, date, time, or whatever, and shows it in, in, in service points uh, in our workflow editor. And these, yes, five minutes, these are actually triggered uh, by the workflow manager. That's what we use in the background to, to build our automations and make them happen. So it's built on Microsoft technology. Uh, yes? Could we get as dynamic as, like, have a data grid, which is key value pairs oh. based on the JSON? Or yes, or yes, a, yes, you can. Whatever? Yes, you can. Let me see if I can access that environment. Let me just close this one down. There we go. No VPN. Let me see if I have, uh, we'll do it like this. Yeah, like Chrome. I think it's this one. Uh, no, wrong one. We have a couple of environments. Oh, yeah, it's in the demo one. Let me test again. <coughs> demo store two, that one. No. And maybe I need my v <laughs> VPN for it. I'm looking for an environment where we actually have some uh, visualizations with some graphical stuff in it. You know, I just showed your passport on YouTube. <laughs> 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 oh, we can edit that later. <laughs> Never mind. Um, oh, do I feel stupid now? <laughs> oh, crap. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we won't upload it until 
tonight. So you might have a uh, you might have an endpoint in there to change your password. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I have that. Um, there's the stuff that I've seen more earlier. I'll, I'll just go ahead and generate a lot of different passwords. <laughs> I've been hacked, so. That's right. And while we're waiting, could you repeat the question? Yes, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if we, we could have like a, a data grid with which the, the end user could fill in key value pairs based mm -hmm. on. Uh, JSON structure or based on uh, a hash table or something? Yes, so um, yes, yes, you can. Uh, basically, you can do anything that you can in JavaScript. So you can add any type of, of grids or, or um, graphical stuff or whatever you want. So then we and could have, have like a generic form with, with multiple possible generations. Yeah, yes. Awesome. But, okay, ne never mind that environment. And, and <laughs> thank you, YouTube, for not stealing my stuff. <laughs> um, Anyway, the only thing you have to think about there is anything uh, JavaScript is on the front end part. So you have to be aware that um, if you do something there, you might have problems from the end user. Okay, so you would probably do something in JavaScript, I don't know JavaScript, but uh, like a get enum you know, <coughs> and then go through it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, any more questions? Okay, awesome. So uh, let's go grab some coffee and uh, listen to Jeffrey's order soon. Thank you.